Texas Instruments is a global semiconductor manufacturing company. It designs and sells semiconductors, primarily analog chips and embedded, embedded processing chips. And it's headquartered in Dallas, Texas. And it was founded in 1930. And it has uh, locations all around the world. It has 31,000 employees. And there's a picture of a assembly and test site in Aguascalientes, Mexico. Uh, key markets are industrial and automotive. Together, they make up 62% of their revenue. And their main product is analog chips, which make up over three quarters of their revenue. They're a public company. They're listed on the New York Stock Exchange, and they're a component of the S&P 500. In 2022, they had a revenue of 18.3 billion, assets of 24.7 billion, and profits of 7.7 .7 billion. And they are the sixth largest semiconductor manufacturing company in the world, with a market cap of 142.44 billion, which also makes them one of the 100 largest companies in the world across all sectors. It was founded in 1930 by Eugene McDermott. McDermott started developing seismographs in the 1920s, and he founded Geo uh, Geophysical Services Incorporated, GSI, to commercialize his seismographs. The main business of GSI was oil oil exploration using reflection seismography and he recruited Cecile soon after founding GSI Cecile Howard Green and Patrick Kigurdi excuse me Eric Johnson Eric Johnson entered the seismograph manufacturing industry in 1930 in New Jersey and in 1934 moved to Dallas to form part of GSI. And Patrick Rigurdi was a supervisor for electronics manufacturing before the war and during the war did work for the Navy and was eventually eventually rose to be the head of all electronics manufacturing uh, for the Navy for electronics that went into airplanes. So these are the four founders, Eugene, of what was to become Texas Instruments. The predecessor was GSI. We have Eugene, Cecile, Eric, and Patrick. And of course, during the war, many companies changed their line of business to defense related stuff. You had a lot of automobile plants and plants dedicated to other things, start building airplanes, tanks, etc. GSI was no exception. GSI developed sonar for the U.S. Navy that would go into their submarines. And during the post-war era, during the late 40s, early 50s, Texas Instruments invested into transistors at a time when it was not obvious that this technology would be commercially viable and of course that 
that paid off handsomely. And here we have uh, Bardeen, Shockley, and Bertain, pictured in 1948 with the first transistor, which they developed at Bell Labs. And this transistor, uh, this semiconductor uh, patent was later acquired by Texas Instruments in 1952. And in 1958, Jack Kilby, an employee of Texas Instruments, developed the first integrated circuit, which was, however, not, not ready to be mass-produced, which is where Robert Noyce of Fairchild came in, developed the planar process in order to mass produce integrated circuits. And throughout the 50s and 60s, Texas Instruments uh, continued to continued to take on lucrative defense contracts. By this point, JSI had become a subsidiary of Texas Instruments because of course the defense side of the business was growing faster than oil exploration so that became their main focus. Texas Instruments also contributed to the space program. They developed the they, they, their transistors excuse me, their integrated circuits helped to power the Apollo guidance computer, which came to replace IBM's big mainframe style guidance computer. Their, their vacuum tube computer. And as a fun aside, GSI, which was by now a subsidiary of Texas Instruments during the 60s, gained the contract to do reflection seismography to spy on the Russian nuclear program to make sure that they were complying with the no test the no test treaty, the no nuclear test treaty. So Texas Instruments, as I said, mainly produces analog chips, which are used for industrial control. And the reason why analog chips are better for the job than digital is that they can represent physical quantities in a continuously variable way. They're represented as a sine wave, whereas digital signals are stored discreetly in a non in a non continuous fashion and they are characterized by square waves. Analog signals are more prone to noise than digital signals, but the reason why they they are fairly optimal for industrial purposes is because like I said they can they can represent continuously variable information continuously as a sine wave rather than discreetly as in digital signals and these physical quantities have obvious applications in an industrial setting. For example, measuring the temperature of machines to make sure that they don't overheat. Or 
measuring the flow of gases or fluids in an industrial setting such as petrol or chemicals paint gases that sort of thing so in conclusion Texas Instruments is a globally recognized company and it's a leader in the design and manufacture of semiconductors with a special focus on analog chips. So that, that's all for today.